Okay, coming to the next part of our case history, that is general examination. Usually, some of the points were most commonly used in almost all the departments. That that is build, posture, nourishment, and even orientation. Coming to the build, according to uh, Sheldon classification, there are three types of build. That is ectomorphic, endomorphic, and mesomorphic. Who are ectomorphic? Ectomorphic are thin and tall persons, and endomorphic are short and obese persons, and mesomorphic are muscular. So these are the three classification given by Sheldon. Okay, well, coming to the next classification that is given by Kushner. According to him, there are various classifications like isthenic, stethnic, hypersthenic, picnic, and also finally cachexia. So coming to this, cachexia means it is a malnourished person, and they will be having a low muscular mass. And coming to the next one that is isthenic, they are thin, thin persons, and hypersthenic is usually in an uh, athletic form. And coming to the picnic, they are usually rounded in structure and they will be having a high amount of muscular uh, and also visceral fat will be higher in nature for these persons. So these are the two classifications by which the person is said to be what is the build of the particular patient. So coming to the next one, usually you can write, so according to the nourishment, according to the, by seeing the patient also you can see what is the nourishment of the patient. So usually you will be writing a well nourished and orientation of the patient whether he is able to answer to the questions which you are asking to the patient. So this is the respect to nourishment and orientation. Coming to the next one, posture. Why posture is asked in case history and how it is related with our dental. So coming to posture, you may know what is that forward bending and sideward bending that is scoliosis or kyphosis. Actually, it is proven by an article which you can see on my back. That is, even the abnormal postures can lead to dental malocclusions like overjet and the sagittal plane can also be changed due to the abnormal postures like kyphosis or scoliosis. So, coming to the next point or the next examination is gait. So, what is gait? It is usually the way a person walks. How the person is walking that is gait and you will be asked what are the various type of gaits you know that is like spastic which can be seen in Parkinsonism and uh, coming to the next one that is waddling type of gait which can be seen in myasthenia's gravis mm -hmm. as well as in conditions where the hip joint or the waist joint got broken so and coming to the next point like scissors gait which is of most important to the dental point of view because we all know in skeletal fluorosis that is in uh, more than 4 ppm of fluoride or even in 7 or 8 ppm of fluoride skeletal fluorosis can occur in that condition we all know joint will get stiffened and in, in that case usually the person in the skeletal fluorosis they will be having a pattern of walk where the right leg will be going over the left leg during the walk which will look like scissors. So scissors gait is of importance to dental point of view due to skeletal fluorosis. Also another various types like tender belt, propulsive, these are other types even in the type. So this covers with gait. Coming to the next aspect that is there are two signs which you can see. One is vital signs and the other one is constitution signs. What are the vital signs? As we all know that is pulse rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure and finally temperature. Coming to the pulse rate which is uh, easy for us to carry out that is everyone will know uh, where is the radial artery. Usually we will be using the two fingers like the index finger and the next one the middle finger by palpating the upper radial artery in the wrist spot. So usually you will be calculating rate, rhythm, volume in radial pulse. So usually the pulse will be between 60 to 100 beats per minute. And coming to the next one that is respiratory rate. Usually the respiratory rate is the common for the that is 14 to 18. So this is 
one inspiration and a aspiration which you can see in the abdomen of the patient and that is one inspiration and aspiration makes one respiratory rate so the normal is 14 to 80 inspirations or respirations per minute so coming to the next one that is blood pressure usually if you are not provided with a sphygma manometer you can say or write it as not recorded and this is in the same case that is with the temperature if you are not provided with a thermometer you can write it as not recorded don't write like uh, 36 or 98 that is normal or a febrile like that because uh, if you are not provided with that instrument you can simply write as not recorded coming to the next one that is um, BMA that is body mass index this you can see in many of the malls or even when you are going to many hospitals you can see there is a BMA calculating machine but usually even you can simply calculate your body mass index by a simple formula given by out of Belgian polymer Kutler Q U E T E L E T is the person who gave body mass index formula that is weight which is calculated in kilograms divided by height in meter square usually you will be having a height and weight machine in your department or in your hospital premises that will be in centimeters for say for example if i am weighing 70 kilograms and my height is 175 it is in centimeters but you have to calculate in meters so put a dot 1.75 into 1.75 into 1.75 so 70 in kilograms divided by the my height the centimeters covered in meters that is 1.75 into 1.75 and i will be getting a value so the final classification will be like below 18.5 it is calculated that underweight and 18.6 to 25 to that is 24.9 is calculated as normal above 25 to 29 .9, that is overweight and 30 and above is classified as obese so this is given by Adolf Kutler this is for body mass index so these are the various vital signs you should calculate in KCST and finally coming to the next one that is constitutional signs what are the constitutional signs you will be usually asking or you will be examining the patient the first one is clapping so what is clapping Usually clapping is defined as the bulbous enlargement of the soft tissue or the terminal end of the phalanges of the fingers. So how you will be seeing that is by an experiment or a sign called Scamrock sign and what is that you usually for all the presents you can see by placing the thumb like this and you can see a diamond shape but for the clubbing patients they will not be having that due to the bulbous enlargement they can't see the diamond shape and this is called shamrock sign and usually you will be asked with the another point that is lobe bond angle usually for a normal presence the angle will be less than 180 degree not for the persons who are having the sign of clubbing so what are the various causes for clubbing say you can uh, for uh, like uh, cardiac causes like cyanotic congenital heart diseases and in the respiratory conditions like bronchitis, lung abscess and also in some conditions like acromegaly and myxedema also you can see clubbing there is another concept called pseudo clubbing which is most commonly seen in hyperthyroid patients where you can see a characteristic drumstick like appearance for the patients so this is with respect to clubbing so shamrock sign low bond angle drumstick appearance these are the important points you should know in clubbing coming to the next one that is cyanosis different cyanosis this is bluish discoloration of the skin and the mucous membrane which is due to increased quantity of reduced hemoglobin increased quantity of reduced hemoglobin usually that is more than 5 milligram percentage so this is called cyanosis where you will be seeing the cyanosis usually you can see it in the tip of the tongue also in the nail beds also in the skin of the uh, face on the palms so again it is classified into two types that is one is a central and another one is a peripheral coming to the central cyanosis 
that is usually due to again the cardiac causes like cyanotic congenital heart diseases and in the respiratory diseases like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease so these are the conditions for which the central cyanosis can happen and for peripheral cyanosis it may be due to cold conditions also even due to uh, the gel tree which is very tight this can cause with the peripheral cyanosis coming to the next one that is icterus or the jaundice so as i say for cyanosis a blue is discoloration jaundice everyone knows that is yellow is discoloration of the skin as mucus membrane which is due to increase in the bilirubin content what is the normal bilirubin content which is mostly around uh, 1 mg per deciliter but for the jaundice patients or the icteric condition it is more than 2 to 3 mg per deciliter so again jaundice where you can see mostly in the again in the nail beds also you can see it in the faces also in sclera of the eyeball so mostly you can see in the sclera of the eyeball for a jaundice patients and also you can you can be asked what are the three types like hepatocellular cholecystic and hepatic so these are the three conditions liver conditions in which jaundice can occur so these are the various signs and the findings you are going to ask in general examination after finishing with general examination we shall proceed to oral cavity that is first starting with extra oral then we can go to the intra oral coming to the extra oral so what are the points which you will be high highlighting that is facial symmetry facial symmetry unless or if the patient is having any development of disorders or bone problem developmental bone problems like cherubism basis disease or uh, even osteoarthritis deformance otherwise usually the patient will be having a bilateral symmetry this you can write or even with the abscess or even during fracture condition the symmetry can go otherwise you can write it as bilateral symmetry coming to the next one that is facial profile for seeing facial facial profile you will know three points like glabella which you can see in the between the eyebrows and the most anterior point of the chin that is soft tissue point a or b so soft tissue point a is the deepest curvature in the upper lip which is also called as philtrum so this is the second point so starting with glabella second one is the soft tissue point a that is deepest curvature in the upper lip philtrum and the third point is the soft tissue point b that is the most anterior point of the chin that is pogonium by drawing an imaginary line between these three points you can see whether the patient is having a straight profile or a convex type of profile or a concave type of profile with that you can relate with the class 2 or a class 3 type of small portion so this is with respect to the facial profile coming to the next one that is lips so what are the various types of lips you can see usually the normal lip seal is formed that is competent so the lips are somewhat so the patient is not able to form a lip seal so that is incompetent lips but the patient is having a normal lips but due to the proclaimed anterior maxillary anterior the patient is not able to form a lip seal with the increase in the activity of the muscles the patient will be able to form a lip seal that is called potentially competent lips there is also another form that is everter type of lips lips that is hypertrophic lips so this is the various forms with respect to lips also again you can go with respect to the another point like mouth opening usually you will be designing with the help of a divider you should be calculating inter incisal distance the normal inter incisal distance is 35 to 45 mm so uh, you can some persons will be saying three finger breadth but in a clinical point of view you should have a divider and measure with the inter incisal edge so this is for mouth opening and coming to the tmj and lymph nodes dr vishal will be explaining it
Next coming to the TMJ examination, usually TMJ examination is done by palpation. It can be palpated in the pre-tragus area also called as extraauricular method and by intraauricular method. First palpation of the pre-tragus area or extraauricular method. The examiner should be placed either in front or behind the patient. Patient is asked to slowly open and close the mouth palpating with index finger placed in the pre-tragus depression. And the another method palpating the intraauricular area performing by inserting small finger into the ear canal and pressing anteriorly while palpating with this method check whether condyle moves symmetrically with the rotation and translation phase in both the methods by digital palpation of the tmj should be done in the tmj examination examiner should check for tenderness thickening or popping usually associated with mouth opening and closing and crepitus or grating sound which indicates advanced tmj damage like degenerative changes next coming to the lymph nodes we all know lymph nodes are oval structures draining the different body parts normally they are non tender soft and cannot be felt even if they are present while examining the lymph nodes tender on palpation and mobility of the lymph node should be known in dental point of view we should check for post auricular lymph nodes pre auricular lymph nodes submental and submandibular lymph nodes and cervical lymph nodes first post auricular lymph nodes these lymph nodes are present behind the ear near the insertion of the sternocleidomastoid by a digital palpation is done by pressing against the skull Enlarged post auricular lymph nodes indicates infection of the scalp temporal and frontal area and the second one pre auricular lymph nodes it can be palpated in front of the ear Enlarged pre auricular lymph nodes indicates infection of the ear Next submental lymph node which can be located below the chin it can be palpated by rolling the fingers below and lingual to the chin against the mylohyoid muscle enlarged in disorders in the anterior portion of the mouth and the lower lip next coming to the submandibular lymph nodes where the submandibular lymph node drains tongue submaxillary gland lips and mouth submandibular lymph nodes located medial to the inferior border of mandible it can be palpated by rolling the fingers against the inner surface of mandible with patient head gently tilted towards one side Enlarged submandibular lymph node indicates infections of the head, neck, sinuses, ear, eye, scalp and pharynx. Next the last the cervical lymph nodes. It anterior and posterior cervical lymph nodes are present. Anterior chain of cervical lymph nodes can be palpated medial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and for Palpation of the posterior cervical lymph nodes palpation starts with the trapezius muscle and move to the sternocleidomastoid